guys sama jesse took away my fear i had in chemistry and biology you have to join the easy and ones my name is Victoria modia a student in italy you, anywhere you are you can join us join the easy world be a subscriber bye welcome to sama jesse easy world science channel today i'm going to handle the tight relation between uh, solving to solve it and uh, I think this video is a kind of two in one and uh, I will also tackle the uh, the approaches, the measures, the first aid measures or the medical steps taken when someone mistakenly swallows iodine, elemental iodine or you can get these accidents when you are doing your iodometric titration or you drink a strong iodine solution like lugos iodine, tincture of iodine accidentally if you are preparing for those uh, some of them being uh, hydrometric titration, of course, hydrometric redox titration, you might mistakenly, you can take this mistakenly. Uh, so, what can you do then? Don't forget to watch my videos where I show you how to prepare the standard solutions of this iodine and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the sodium to solve it. I also taught you how to remove stubborn iodine stains. Check the video out here on this channel, Sir Majesty Easy World. First, I want to tell you the first aid, the first approach you take when you mistakenly swallow iodine. Fine, iodine, just like halogens, are very reactive and dangerous. And remember, iodine is also necessary for the functioning of the thyroid gland. And the same iodine can also cause problems for the thyroid gland and have other some health complications when the elemental ones are taken. So the iodine doesn't dissolve in water well, but you are advised to see a, a medical specialist. You need that one if the symptoms are getting beyond normal or what to swallow is too much. So we advise to see your medical doctor live and direct, but you have to take some measures to save the person's life or to, to, to curb the condition from getting worse. Don't try drinking potassium iodide solution. That will worsen the situation because iodine is quite soluble in potassium iodide. It doesn't dissolve well in water. So if you drink potassium iodide, you are increasing the solubility. You can only use potassium iodide if there is a release of radioactive iodine. That will protect your thyroid gland from absorbing the radioactive iodine and, and absorb the stable isotopes of iodine. Like it stops the thyroid gland from absorbing the iodine 131. But in the case of exposure, you inhale it so much, you don't take potassium iodide. Then I could have said you drink a lot of water. Unfortunately, drinking a lot of water here or rinse with water will not help because you have swallowed it. So now, what are the symptoms you might get when you take in or you get exposed to iodine, elemental iodine, orally? You have this metallic taste in your mouth. You might even have delirium. That is a confusion in thinking, reduced ability to be awareness of the uh, environment or your surrounding. Uh, you see other symptoms. You can even have a sore throat. Can have this irritating to the eye. So, first measure if you are dealing with iodine, you look like me, you protect yourself. You even need nose mask because it's a solid but it's a volatile solid. So, you can have your sore throat, you can also have a loss of appetite, you can have many other symptoms as you can see there on the screen. But, first approach what you will do to someone that mistakenly take strong solution of iodine or swallow the crystal of iodine is one, let's take a break. We'll be right back. In ethyl soda dioxide, a dirty green gelatinous precipitate is formed as you can see. For accurate results and proper guidance, buy from the easy world of science. You have your iodine crystal here, all the specimen, the materials needed are available and they are affordable, they are reliable. Here is your potassium iodide. Over here you have the ammonium ion 2 tetraoxosulfate 6 hexahydrate, a double salt. Here is the burette of different types. You have the one with a tap, the one with clip, the one with ball. Place your order now at easywallscience.com or right here you're watching this video. You contact me with the number plus two three four seven zero six five one six six two one seven. These are the boiling tubes. Over here we have our weighing balance, analytical balance, which is very much sensitive. It can weigh 0 0.01, like when you are required to measure 24.82, this particular one can do it. And 
name them all as you can see there on the screen we have all this we supply them so contact us at easyworldscience.com or Sir Majesty's World Science channel on YouTube or you can contact me with the line you see there on the screen you can email us with uh, easyworldscience.gmail.com God bless you patronize us but we will help you in setting your laboratory also in chemistry, physics, biology, and even your hospital equipment, auto analyzers are available at the Easy World of Science. We cannot do without you. We value your patronage. Much love from me to you. See you. Okay. First thing you have to do to contain or to stop the situation of swallowing iodine or taking the oral form of it, the solution from the lugose iodine and other forms of iodine is that you should give the person milk. The person should take milk every 15 to 20 minutes. That's condensed liquid milk. Then, scientifically, these things I'm giving you are, they have their scientific reason. I've done the research, I've tried to see the rate at which the iodine uh, sublimes. When you put milk, I discovered that the milk try to conceal it from expanding or penetrating. Then, you can now, secondly, give the person starch solution or flour. Just add flour or uh, cornstarch in water, and the person will drink it. This idea is based on the fact that we use starch to confirm the presence of iodine. When you drop iodine on starch, it turns blue-black. That turning blue-black is just forming a complex and colors, uh, the process is what we call charge transfer complex forming. And uh, remember that starch is a, is a carbohydrate that is made up of two different types of polysaccharides, which are amylose and amylopectin. The amylose is a linear chain and uh, the amylopectin is a branched chain. It is the amylose inside the starch that is responsible for the formation of that blue or dark coloration when you add iodine to it. So, in this case, it means that the amylose has a helical structure and inside that helical structure, it holds iodine. So, which means you can use starch to absorb iodine. So okay, from what I'm telling you that uh, starch is used to absorb iodine, so let us see this demonstration, the little uh, demonstration to tell you that, to prove that this is the iodine crystal. And here I have uh, the starch solution, or you might even get your normal cold water starch. Yeah. So what I will do now is, I have to put this, let me just use this one, this smaller. just want to get the iodine there. So. Though to us, the iodine is there, what is subliming, is coming up to this surface. So what must I do to confirm that? So what I'll do is I'll prepare my starch solution. And uh, it is starch that will indicate that iodine is given out. I'll hold it. I'll soak a filter paper in a starch solution and hold it on this mouth. You will see that it will turn blue black, which means the starch, the iodine is subliming on keeping the, uh, 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 the, the, the filter paper soaked in starch solution at the top or at the brim, at the mouth of the beaker, I want to make the starch solution. Here is it. Okay. Just dissolve your cold water starch. Okay. And you shake. I'm sure some molecules have entered. This is my filter paper. I'll just fold it, then soak it into the starch solution. So what I do is to confirm that this iodine is subliming. So if you if you swallow it, it will be penetrating because it's all that like getting into your body system. And that's what you do. So holding it here, you keep it here for some minutes. Remember, you see down there is. Check the color change with time. I will not put it into the solution, but I'll just hold it and be calm. You see, the edge and the other places around has started turning blue black. When I turn it like this, you see, see there are droplets. I've turned it again. When I turn it back, you see the blue black margin showing that this iodine is far down there, but it's subliming. It's subliming. So you see it, you must not put it there. And you see how this so this has not taken 
up to a minute. This is about uh, 30 seconds and you have seen this. See? So if you turn it around again, remember the iodine is down, down. I'm not putting it in, I'm just holding it. This is the length. So it means it is subliming. On turning this again, you see, it has turned bluish. And they're telling you that iodine is subliming. So what do I do now? If I pour some of this starch solution into this and still soak with another filter paper, I won't pour everything, soak some filter paper into this and hold against this for two minutes if i've added starch into the iodine i will no longer detect starch here which means sorry i will no longer detect uh, i will no longer detect iodine here using this uh, uh, filter paper soaked in starch why because the starch i've poured in has locked the iodine molecules remember the amylo uh, the amylose of course have a helical structure that locks the iodine of course and that, that is why you can take the cornstarch solution and also milk to stop the uh, dangerous effect of uh, taking a strong iodine solution like the Lugol's iodine, of course. So you see, still turning more darker black, so showing that the iodine is still subliming and is evaporating. So I didn't put it inside it, just on top. So you see this little experiment. So what I'll now do is that I'll get another filter paper here. Let's keep this one aside. Get another filter paper and fold again, then soak it into the starch solution, keep it away, then pour the starch solution into this iodine and hold that one soaked in the starch. You see that you can no longer detect the iodine. So this is a new, look at that conducted experiment. Here is the starch solution, just shake it well. So I'll soak again. So what I do next is I'll pour this starch solution direct and it will turn blue black of course you see. So if I hold this now after one minute it will still remain clear because the starch has locked the whole iodine molecule and it will stop subliming. So as you are seeing this is about uh, 19 seconds here. Five seconds still holding it and nothing is happening it is very very clear nothing is happening the iodine is no longer subliming so the amylose in the starch has locked the iodine molecules and this is what the starch the cornstarch and the milk will do to the iodine that you swallowed remember also activated charcoal like I'm telling you I'll still tell you can also help to absorb them so that is the scientific proof you see now See these two peppers? This one was before I add the starch solution into the iodine. The iodine was subliming. There is nothing locking it. It's volatile. But after adding starch to the iodine, it turned blue black, forming this uh, blue black color due to what we call uh, the CT system. That is the charge transfer system that makes this color here. But here, after adding the iodine, after adding the starch to the iodine, it is still very, very clear. There is no sign that iodine is coming out again. So this proves that cornstarch can help you or just don't take it too much as the first aid to lock up the iodine that you swallowed. Thank you. The first approach is necessary. You give the person milk, then you can give the person the cornstarch dissolved in water and the person will drink it. But you might not do this if the person is having a repulsion, try to vomit this. But this is the home approach you can do. Give the person cornstarch to drink. Then every 20 to 15 minutes, you give the person milk. Now, I'm explaining the science why cornstarch or even the floor is okay for the person. I told you that when you drop iodine on a starch, it turns blue black. And the chemistry behind this is that a starch is made up of two different polysaccharides that are made up of a, a glucose units, glucose D, of course. Uh, we have the amylose and we have the amylopectin. I say the amylose is the linear chain, while the amylopectin is actually the, the, the branched chain. So the amylose forms a helical structure, as you can see there on the screen, and this helical structure locks 
iodine molecule. So you can use starch to absorb the iodine the person has swallowed inside. Then having taken these precautions, you go to hospital, of course, what we expect them to do for you in the hospital, they will also give you a kind of a charcoal, activated charcoal, is one of the common approach used in case of poisoning, irrespective of what the poison might be. But remember what I said, this is just a first aid approach, and please avoid taking in iodine. Do whatever you can to avoid taking the elemental iodine, because this is not so easy. So during titration, you can use the pipette ball, or you can use the pet pump, you can use this little mechanism I uh, applied here. Some of these easy ones supplies all these things, and they are very cheap and affordable. You use them to prepare the iodine instead of running the risk of allowing your students to do that. Then, when, while working on iodine, elemental iodine, wear your goggles because it affects the eye. Then, don't try sucking it. Uh, of course, I told you you have this metallic taste, you might have delirium, and all this. So, these steps, I told you, when you now go to hospital, they might give you activated charcoal, of course, treat the symptoms, take your vital signs, and remember a prolonged exposure to iodine might affect the thyroid gland, of course. And remember the iodine, like I said earlier, helps the iodine, the high thyroid gland to function well. Uh, potassium iodide actually is used to absorb this, and when those things are formed, you have the, the I3, the I5, the I7, the just if you come to the hormones of the thyroid gland, they are named based on the number of uh, have the T3, the T4, which is the one we call the triiodotyronine. We have the tetraiodotyronine, commonly called tyroxine. So, iodine is needed for the thyroid gland to function well. The same iodine, if you expose yourself to the poisoning, may also affect your thyroid gland. It might become hyperactive more than normal. So, these are the measures taken if you swallow or mistakenly take or inhale excess elemental iodine. But remember, in form of iodide, uh, that one might not be too harmful, but you are not. There is a required dosage you are not also allowed to take. Uh, I warned against telling the person to drink potassium iodide solution. Though potassium iodide, of course, is very bitter and uh, might not be so good. The person might not take it well. Uh, although if the person even take it well, it's not advised because iodine dissolves so much well. So you are increasing the penetration of iodine into your body, into the thyroid gland. And this is not what you want. So that is it. The precautions taken, remember to see your medical doctor and expert. But these things I told can save you. Don't fear so much if you didn't swallow much of it. Of course, not forgetting, we are not allowed to go and swallow. If you notice it has entered into your mouth, nobody will tell you to find any possible available space and spit it. Then rinse with water. But if it has eventually entered, you follow this approach, use your constant solution or your uh, your, your, your floor solution, then you take meal regularly, then you can apply activated charcoal, then you see your doctor, uh, those that are responsible for taking care of poison because we can call this poison also. Now, the second thing that I'm going to discuss in this video is the correct end point in the titration between potassium, uh, between iodine and potassium iodide and uh, sodium to sulfate. I've prepared these solutions where sodium to sulfate is regarded as the solution B, where it's, uh, it contains 24.82 grams of the pentahydrate of sodium to sulfate in one dmq of solution, which is equivalent to 0.1 mole per dmq. Then this one also contains 25.4 grams of iodine crystal per dmq of solution, which is also equivalent to 0.1 mole per dmq. Now, this titration. If you have done this titration, you will be getting a negative result whereby you couldn't get to your neutralization if you pour A into B. So, what I'm going to do now, I'll do the titration. I'm going to pour the iodine. Here is the setup. Please follow the instruction. Never change the standard solutions like I told you. The examiner know what exactly what he gave you to prepare or what they gave you to prepare. So, don't adjust. But this particular titration is very dicey and confusing. So let me do it and we'll see the next step and the correct endpoint. This is my solution A. 
So I'm going to put it in the burex. That's a zero. I've taken it to zero mark, of course. So what next is I prepared. I prepared my uh, sodium to sulfate solution. Let me prepare 25. This is 25. I want to use the pipette ball or the pipette filler, I call it, and take my 25 mil. Oh, this one is not in So I'll just pour some. I've washed all these things. Remember, if you buy from Easy World Science, I'll teach you how to use anything you buy from me. So that's it. See, the mark is there. So I bring my chemical flask and put it there. You are expected to add the iodine until the solution turns yellow before you now add your starch indicator. Before you now add your starch uh, indicator. For what I taught you in treating, uh, treating iodine poisoning, if, if you add this starch in the beginning, the iodine you are adding, the starch might be locking them up, might be picking the iodine, and that will affect your end point. So it's advised you add like this. You keep adding the iodine until this solution turns yellow, then you add your indicator. So. Nothing is happening. Nothing is happening, so no neutralization yet, and I've exhausted everything. Imagine. Not that the examiner is wrong. This is not wrong. It's very, very obvious some things can be done. So I've run the whole 50, and there is no neutralization. The color remained what it is. So you join me in my private live stream. This particular experiment, I've been using it for analysis. And I know what exactly should be done to get the endpoint. The correct endpoint to join my live stream, we need your support. Please. I know that your thank you is enough, but the thank you cannot move a horse. This channel is spending a lot in the spreading and teaching of sciences. So the little you can, you join me with that number you see there on the screen on WhatsApp. Chat me up. And remember, you need to help us a bit to help you. Don't go forging or changing anything. You have seen I've poured the whole 50 and there is no color change. Something is not wrong at all. Just obey the instruction. The other way around is that what if they put B in a burette, meaning the sodium to sulfate, what if they put in a burette, I'll fill here with sodium to sulfate and then tell you to prepare potassium, uh, this, the, 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 this particular solution A. So it's possible if you check some exam body like I think uh, 2016 something something they were telling students put B in burette. It's not a crime that they tell you put B. What you tell your students is to follow instructions very well and I advise you on that day, even if you are not joining us, take this advice, make sure you collect a sample of A and B and keep for yourself on that exam day for filling of your report. Now, what if I happen to turn around this particular thing, putting B here and titrating against A? So let's see what will happen if such thing happens. So, so save time, but remember, 
A might be here, as we have seen, no end, no end point, no interrelation. Nothing is wrong at all. The easy war sign, Sir Majesty is experienced in analysis. If you check my channel around the 2020, there was something concerning Ayodoform. Kevin City Charles were confused. I predicted and I told them exactly what would come out. If you check that video before the exam, it rhymed exactly. So this year has come again. I've been using this particular titration as long as 216 to do my analysis, aerometric titration, and I know what they will exactly ask you. So don't go forging anything, don't be confused by anyone. Science is not only about exams. So I'm encouraging you also to do practicals so that you can learn all these things, not waiting till the exam, you're rushing. No, that is not science. So let me now do the second option, which is putting B in a burette. This is B already here. So what I do, what I'll do now is to prepare exactly. I'm gonna prepare 25 mil of this A. And let me see what will happen when I titrate B against A. I've titrated A against B, it did not neutralize. Just join me on my life team. I'll guide you properly well. And you won't regret that. Science is real. Okay, so using this method will prevent you sucking the iodine. Okay, with this, your job is just to press this, keep going down till it comes to the mark. So, but they may not likely allow us to do this, or even if they do, okay, they are dead. We now release it here. Or you can use your prepared filler. So here you add what the initial is zero. I don't know if my camera can get that. But I don't have time bringing it closer. So the initial here is zero. So you see that almost a drop will neutralize this, and that makes your reading very small. So I'm adding when it gets yellow, I'll add my starch indicator, which is here. The proper guide and the likely questions following this titration is available when you join my live stream. So it's more small. Okay, it's yellow now. Add your indicator. And that's uh, I told you why the indicator is added at this stage. To avoid the starch consuming the iodine, because starch locks up iodine when I told you the safety also ensure accurate endpoints. See, okay. Imagine it was just only this is four, so four CMQ is what we got that neutralized the whole thing. Basically, they know what they gave you. So, join me on that live stream. I want again, don't change any of the standard solutions, both the sulfate and the iodine and potassium iodide. Watch my video on how I prepare it, obey them, and provide those things you are asked to provide. So in that live stream, I will also entertain your questions on how to prepare other solutions. I will also tell you how to fill your reports. Be able to do some calculations. And good luck. See you in that live stream. Bye for now.
and I'm Jennifer. Guess, Guess what? what? There's a channel called Star Majesty Easy World Science. And you're the best part. Mm -hmm. It makes science so wow. It makes science easy, simplified, and very, very fun. Guess what? Rocky Science ain't Rocky Science anymore. It's now ABC. Like if you did science in your entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing about Star Majesty Easy World Science channel is that he makes available laboratory equipment and reagents Guess the best part, if chemistry has been hard for you, he does tutorials And another thing is, when you order for these things, they are high quality and they are also cheap and affordable for anybody If you want to order, just look at the number below the screen And don't forget to subscribe and hit the little notification button down below Don't forget to share, of course, obviously there's love in sharing Thank, Thank you. you! See you there! <laughs>